Hi everyone, this is Frank DeMora with the End Times Research Ministry, getting right into some prophecy for the 13th of March. And uh, bear with me because this is going to be uh, one of my, the only video I'll be doing today if you're here at YouTube because I'm in a traveling mode. And so let me go right to the news because I know that there's a lot of people watching the news today, especially what's going on with the new pope that was elected. Now, some time ago, I gave you some information about uh, the Maliki prophecy. This prophecy was uh, given to the world 900 years ago, and he outlined uh, 112 popes, and he gave phrases for each pope, and supposedly these phrases matched up with all of these popes. And so the world was going crazy thinking the, the 112th pope, according to Malachi's prophecy, is going to be the false prophet. And he, his name or the phrase to him is Peter the Roman. And he was supposed to be a, a black pope named Peter the Roman. And so what I told the people to try to, to calm them down a little bit is, I quoted Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 17 through 22. And in this prophecy, the Lord essentially tells us that if a man prophesies, and, is, and it's coming from God, it's going to happen. Everything that he prophesied is going to happen. But if a man prophesied and it's not from God, then he is a false prophet, and there's no doubt about it. Take a look at what the Lord says. I'm not going to just paraphrase it. I want you to see what the Word of God says on this issue because I'm going to be giving you some information about the new Pope that was just elected. In verse 17, And the Lord saith unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. And I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command them. In other words, God is telling them exactly what to write. And this prophet, if he's a true prophet, he's going to be writing exactly what he hears from Jehovah God. That's the name of, obviously, God from the Old Testament. I am Jehovah God, Alpha and Omega, many titles. In verse 19, And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So in other words, if a, if a true prophet is speaking and the people don't pay attention, it's not going to be good news for those people who don't listen. In verse 20, But the prophet which shall presume to speak the word in my name, in other words, it really didn't come from the Lord, which I have which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods. Even that prophet shall die. Very blunt, very, uh, very direct. We understand exactly what the Lord's saying. A prophet will die if he is a false prophet, giving information that is not coming from God. Verse twenty one. And if thou shalt say in thy heart, How shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When the prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is, the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken presum presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. And so, there you have it. It's point blank. The Lord tells us that if it's from God, it's going to happen. If it's not from God, it's going to be a false prophet. Get away from him, essentially. All right, so, one of my warnings in February 25th, 2013, I quote from my post. This is what I said. And since Jesus in Matthew chapter 24 warned us to look for false prophets in the last days, the only way for us to see who is true or false prophet is to see if what they say as coming from God comes to pass. 
So when in reference to Malachi's prophecy, when they're talking about giving certain phrases, and this is supposed to be for this specific uh, pope, then if it doesn't happen, you know that Malachi's prophecy didn't come from our Lord God. So let's find out what he said, because there may be some people that are watching a YouTube video who don't know what Malachi said. Again, this prophecy went out 900 years ago, and he had outlined 112 prophets, or prophet uh, popes, excuse me. So what did St. Malachi prophecy? He said that the 112th pope will be Petrus Romanos, will be he'll be a black pope who will be the last pope and he will be the false prophet who will link up with supposedly the antichrist all right so keep in mind now keep in mind the other 111 popes that maliki talked about he gave very specific titles or phrases to these people all right each one was separate and different they meant something different and so when you look at the 112th pope you'll find out that he was not a black pope and he was he's not taking the name of peter romano like according to malachi's prophecy as a matter of fact today we just found out that the cardinal is who was just installed as the pope is from Argentina, okay? And he took the name of Francis as as the new pope. Didn't take it as Peter the Roman, right? He took it as Francis. Now, when people uh, who have written books or they're trying to prove their their theology or their reasoning how they say that he is still the, the person that he was talking about this is some of the responses that we have gotten keep in mind that he was born in argentina he wasn't born in italy he was born in argentina and i give you some information down here the cardinal that was just installed he was chosen as pope today wednesday and will be known as pope francis and was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. So does that sound like Peter Romano, a black pope? Does he look black to you? He's not black. And he was born in Argentina. Now, what some people are saying, to try to fit this into their agenda, if you will, is that he is of Italian descent. Because when you look down here, and I put this up, this information for you, the, as some are pointing out, non-European, because the news were saying that this is the first time a non-European was elected as the Pope. And, and of course, we know that really isn't the case, and I'm going to cite what it is. It says, can two different meanings, one based on ethnicity and the other nationality. So while Ber Bergoloni, what I can't even pronounce his last name yet, is an Argentinian citizen, his parents were born in Italy, and he is ethnically Italian. So what they're saying is, because his parents were Italian, now we're gonna, you know, we're just gonna bypass that he was, a, he's actually from Argentina and call him an Italian because his parents were an Italian of descent. And so, and then they say that because he wears, uh, he was from fr the uh, Franciscan order, that they wear these black robes, that he is Peter. Romano black and so I mean you can you can make it say whatever you want but the fact of the matter is what was written down 900 years ago is not what they said now when you go back and you look at the 111 that the uh, Malachi prophecy talks about you'll see also that in that 111 that the phrases that they use for the popes, 
they are also in many cases they're really stretching it to make the case that yeah this prophecy is the truth but i look at it as this plain and simple truth what malachi wrote about the pope being black and taking on the name of peter romano or is not the case here the pope is not black the pope is from argentina his parents are an italian ascent but he was born in argentina makes him an argentina uh citizen so you can you can dispute it or you can do whatever you want with it i'm just presenting you the facts and i'm going to stay in god's word in the book of deuteronomy because what i see here as being told about a, a true and a false prophet that it all has to happen everything that he writes down better come uh together because if it doesn't he's a false prophecy and then the the biggest and the most uh i think the most important topic for anybody would be keep in mind this is a prophecy that doesn't appear in the bible this is an outside source prophecy and so you know don't get too upset if you're if what you're trying to make this petros romanos this black pope uh when you're trying to fit him into an argentinian it just it doesn't work because god's word is god's word and it can't be changed that's not what we see in that prophecy from malachi and that's all i'm going to say about it so you can go out and throw all you want at it and try to make it to go but that is not going to go except for one other thing i had this comment from this person that was relayed to me and they said all popes can be called peter the roman and they stand in for peter and their headquarters are in rome i mean this is generality so general but keep in mind that it was a very supposed to be a very specific prophecy for each pope they gave the name malachi gave the name phrase independent phrases that meant for certain people each pope so to say that every one of these people are a product of malachi is is ludicrous because you're just you're taking this stretching business way way too far now again you can make the choice of whether you're going to try to make it fit for your own purposes or you can just rest in peace in deuteronomy chapter 18 and then also in matthew where the lord talks about in the last days you're going to hear uh, and see things from false prophets so that's the way it is all right now moving back we want another article because in my book and when i first started to go out to preach back in 1976 one of the things that were laid on my heart was america was going to decline and i in those who watched my first presentations and they're still around they remember what i said about watching the future when america is going to decline we're seeing the decline today i was just brought up uh, a news article I want you to see this for a second because uh, the decline in the economy and everybody's all hyped up right now because the last two weeks the economy the the stock market seems like it's doing really good it's all a rouge it's gonna it's gonna fall apart and uh, it it's when it comes down everybody's gonna be surprised right well there's indications already i mean look at number one is the debt the debt ratio for the united states of america the debt is almost 17 trillion dollars it can never be paid off unless you go bankrupt if you may bankrupt the country go into chapter seven just like iraq did when they invaded them but since these since the debacle for the homes debacle in 2008 our economy has plummeted and it's still at a standstill and the news media is trying to do whatever they can to make it seem like it's being propped up it's not working and the world sees it now take a look at this the world poll image of the u.s declines 
says worldwide approval of the U.S. leadership dipped considerably during President Barack Obama's fourth year in office, but it increased in some countries, including Mexico. Well, you know, just take a look at what's going on in Mexico. Mexico is there in their own little war over the cartels. And we know that there's they're trying to do investigating or investigation here in uh, the United States about the gun running from the Amer- Amer- America into Mexico. And Barack Obama still has to have a lot of questions answered about this. It says the medium approval rating for U.S. leadership in 130 countries was 41% in 2012, down 8% or percentage points from the 49% approval during Obama's first year in office, according to a Gallup poll released on Wednesday. And of course, when somebody just gets in office, they had all these high hopes, and sure, the polls would shoot up. And now what they're starting to see, and now especially as they're starting to see what's in the Obama health care bill, People are really getting agitated and they're becoming fearful because they're now finally starting to see what's in the health care bill. And it's taxing America to death. And so we see the ratings go down. We see the image of the United States going down. Why is this? I mean, what is, what's behind this? Well, all you have to do is know what Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7 talk about. That chapter, number two and seven, deals with the world powers one after another all the way until the end of time when the Lord comes back, when the last world power is installed, and that's going to be the revived Roman Empire. We see that in the European Union right now. And there was a list of nations or a list of empires. We saw the Babylonian, the Medo-Persian, the Greek, the Romans, and then the revived Roman Empire. And the last part of it would be the Ten Toes. And in chapter 7, we see primarily the same thing. The United States was never in back here. It was never even down here when the Lord was alive. And yet people are trying to say that America is the last world power. And it's, it's ridiculous. And so I've been telling the people, watch the decline of America. Because America is going to give way for the Ten Toes, eventually. Right now, there's 27 nations in the European Union, the western leg of the old Roman Empire. But as it starts cracking down, as we see in Daniel chapter 2, verses 41 and 43, because it says that they're not going to cleave one to another. So when we start to see America going down, we see what's going on with the currency I remember when I used to go into from uh, from New York to Buffalo or to uh, right over the, the bridge into Canada. I used to buy things for a dollar was 40% more money in Canada, the dollar. That isn't the case anymore. And it continues to lose its value. You'll watch and see what happens. Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7 talk about a revived Roman Empire. They do not talk about the United States of America. The United States of America is going to decline in power. Now, along with that, let me move to another prophecy that I've been warning you about. And Christ gives us all of sign, all of these signs. And we know that when he speaks, both in the Old Testament and New Testament, everything comes out just the way he said. And here's three of the prophecies you'll see in the Old Testament here that deals with the dying, the deaths of the birds, the fish, and the animals. You'll see them right here. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 3. Now, I've been giving you a list, a, a comprehensive list, by the way, of all of the fish and the animals that are dying, the beasts, the animals, and the birds dying. But I want you to take a look at this one because this one I saw today. Uh, let me go back to it. We'll see if we can get regain that. All right, here's the article. China pulls nearly 6,000 dead pigs from the river. I'm just going to play it for you. 
China, the number of dead pigs found floating in a river leading into Shanghai has reached almost 6,000. Government officials say the surge in dead pigs may be from pig farms upstream, coming after police campaigns to curb the illicit trade of pork products from diseased pigs. The Shanghai municipal government says the city's water supply remains safe and that it is taking proper measures to dispose of the pigs and test water for common swine viruses. In the province where the pigs may have come from, there are no reports of a swine epidemic. Officials say cold weather is to blame for the pig deaths. Shanghai authorities have been retrieving swollen and rotten pigs since Friday. The images widely broadcast, raising public ire against local officials. Lee Powell, The Associated Press. All right, so there you go. Now, the Lord did tell us that we were going to see events like this. Now, you know, we're seeing different reasons why the animals and the birds and the fish are dying. But the fact of the matter is, that's exactly what's happening. They're dying. And so this is another one of those cases. This is 6,000. A couple days ago, it was just pushing 2,000. Now it's 6,000. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. Now, because I've been traveling today and I'm kind of tired, and I know that this video, I tried to make it as coherent as I could, but I was up very, very early. And uh, so you'll please excuse me, if you will. Uh, but for those people that are new, if you just found my YouTube channel, when you scroll down to my site, you'll see this, more news. Just click to the link right here. And when you click to this link, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get the news, the rest of the news, all right? And when you scroll down, you'll be able to see all of the different news. Uh, I'll give you the scriptures first. You'll see uh, the Persian, Assyria, and the Confederacy against Israel, Psalm 83, and Ezekiel 38, the two wars that it haven't been fulfilled yet. And then you'll see the news that we posted. Syrian shells hit Lebanon, leaving one wounded. Marcy appeals court's decision to suspend election. And, uh, of course, Marcy is the, uh, the new president that was installed in Egypt. He's bringing Sharia law, and now he wants to suspend e elections. Uh, it certainly looks like Isaiah chapter 19 is coming into fruition. We see the evil or this cruel Lord that was going to be given over to Egypt at a time where Egyptians were going to be fighting against e Egyptians, and that is the case right now. So scroll down. There's a lot of material there today. And uh, again, this is Frank DeMora. Thank you very, very much for coming to my site. Again, I apologize uh, for being kind of tired and my thoughts aren't really as they usually are. But uh, it is what it is. But God bless you all and uh, have a great night.